Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the trends in electron configuration across and down the periodic table. In a previous topic we saw that the electron configuration of an atom tells us how electrons are assigned to subshells and orbitals, and if you haven't seen those videos then you need to watch them. In this video we're going to explore the link between electron configuration and the periodic table. I'm showing you the periodic table here. Remember that in the periodic table, the elements are ordered by increasing atomic number, in other words by the number of protons. For example hydrogen has one proton, helium has two protons, and so on. Vertical columns are called groups. Each element in a group has the same number of electrons in the outer electron shell. For example, each element in group 7 has 7 electrons in the outer shell. Horizontal rows are called periods, and the period number tells us the number of the highest energy electron shell for the elements in that period. For example, in all of the elements in period 4, the highest energy electron shell is shell 4. Now a key idea you need to understand is that there's a repeating trend in the properties of the elements across a period. For example, looking at period 2, on the left side the elements are metals, but on the right they're non-metals. Looking at period 3, this trend repeats again, with metals on the left and non-metals on the right. Between the metals and non-metals we have the metalloids. Metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals. We see the same trend repeating across the other periods, and scientists call a pattern of repeating trends periodicity. There are several other examples of periodicity, and you need to be able to describe and explain them. In this video we're looking at the periodic trends in electron configuration. As we saw before, each period represents a new highest energy electron shell. In period 1, the highest energy electrons are in the first shell. In period 2, the highest energy electrons are in the second shell, etc. Now for each electron shell, electrons fill the S subshell before they fill the P subshell. For example, in period 2, lithium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s1, and beryllium has 1s2, 2s2. Remember that an S subshell can hold a maximum of two electrons. So in the case of boron, the next electron occupies the P subshell, giving us the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Electrons continue to be added to the P subshell across the remainder of period 2. Neon has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. A P subshell can contain a maximum of 6 electrons, so in the case of neon, the 2p subshell is full. Moving to period 3, electrons fill the 3s subshell before filling the 3p subshell. Now at this point things get slightly more complicated. Shell 3 has the 3d subshell, which can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. However, if we look at the energy of the subshells, we can see that the 4s subshell has a lower energy than the 3d subshell. Remember that electrons will always enter the lowest energy subshell first. So moving to period 4, electrons now enter the 4s subshell. Potassium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. And calcium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Now at this point the 4s subshell is full. Scandium has one more electron than calcium, so this electron now enters the 3d subshell, giving scandium the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d1. The 3d subshell continues to be filled across period 4, before electrons enter the 4p subshell. So the key idea you need to understand is that the filling of electron subshells follows a periodic pattern. Within the highest energy shell, the S subshell fills before the P subshell. Each block in the periodic table is named after the subshell containing the highest energy electron for the elements in that block. So these blocks are called the S, P, 
D and F blocks. Now, within a group, each element has the same number of electrons in the outer subshell. For example, all of the elements in group 1 have one electron in their outer S subshell. And because of this, all of the elements in a group have similar chemical properties. OK, in the next video, we look at the trends in atomic radius.